Hello, it's Michael E. Gerber, the embarrassed old man who met with you about a week and a half ago and really blew it. I want to apologize for that show. Any of you who've revisited simply see how stupid a man my age can be trying to work a microphone, a computer, a the visuals. I have no idea what in the world I was doing, but thank God the guy I was interviewing really had his stuff handled. <laughs> if it hadn't been for him, it would have been all over. But here we are doing it again. So you got to understand I'm indomitable. In short, embarrassment only phases me for a moment, and then I simply come back to do it for real. So welcome to Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. Welcome to transforming the state of economic development worldwide. Welcome to the idea that by transforming the state of entrepreneurship worldwide, we can transform the state of small business worldwide. And in the process of accomplishing those absolutely, specifically, absolutely necessary objectives, we can transform the state of economic development worldwide. Today, we've got a guy with us. Actually, I've only met him twice. I've spoken to him several times, but he's impressed me each and every one of those times. His name is Patch Baker, and his life's mission is to transform the state of entrepreneurial development, of economic development, for all of the veterans who have served our country, are currently serving our country, but getting ready to leave, to separate from the military, to come here in stupid land where everything is supposed to work and whatever, nothing seems to. So I want to say to you, Patch Baker, thanks for joining us today. We got so much to talk about and so much to learn. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. This is an honor, and uh, I'm I'm I was super excited about this. Well, I'm super excited that you're super excited, but I've always been super excited about this absolutely critical thing that we've been doing for the past 45 years. As you know, I've written now 32 books, all on the same subject. We call it the E-Myth. The E-Myth is what I envisioned way back then when I started my entrepreneurial career, starting up my very first company. That company was called the Michael Thomas Corporation. Michael, because of me. Thomas, because of Tom. And essentially, we sat down together for a number of weeks, seems like months, before we opened our doors to discover what I called our dream, our vision, our purpose, and our mission. Our dream was to transform the state of small business worldwide. Our vision was to invent what we called the McDonald's of small business consulting. Our purpose was to make certain that what we did could make it possible for every single small business owner worldwide, no matter what business they were in, no matter what their product or service was, to be able to become as successful as a McDonald's franchisee. Now that might sound ridiculously small and not very ambitious, but hear me, a McDonald's franchisee is more successful than 95% of all small businesses on the planet. But that wasn't all we set out to do. We also had a mission. And our mission was to invent the business development system that would be critical for us to achieve our dream, our vision, and our purpose. Now understand, Patch, when I say that, the dream is the product of the dreamer. The vision is the product of the thinker. The purpose is the product of the storyteller. And the mission is the product of the leader. A dreamer, a thinker, a storyteller, a leader. 
That's what you got into, Patch, when you decided to create your company to literally make it possible for all of your peers, all of those veterans, all of those guys and ladies out there in the field somewhere around the world serving this country, but preparing to come home. Nobody, but nobody has prepared them to come home. And so I'm delighted to speak to you who are, you might say, cohorts, the two of us, determined to make something happen seemingly nobody knows how to do. So tell me, Patch, how do you do it? What problems do you face as you're doing it? What would you love to happen that would make it easier, faster, better, more productive as you do it for every single veteran coming here? Well, that's a loaded question. I think, uh, I think quite honestly, I think that business happens before we, I think that people learn about business before we actually think we do. Like people go to school to learn about business. Um, but I actually learned more about business from my grandfather growing up. Um, I learned more about business then than I ever realized that I did. But he gave me an understanding of what money was and, you know, how deals were done and stuff like that. Um, and I don't think that we do a good job of that. And, you know, growing up, you know, a lot of kids these days, they, um, they're, they're just given everything. They don't have to work for things. They don't have to work for things like allowances and stuff like that. So they have no concept of money. So then when they get into business or they think they want to get into business, they don't have any clue how to, um, how to manage money or how to even manage bills or things like that, which as a business owner, you know, if you can't manage money or you can't make money and then use that money properly, you can't grow a business. So, uh, for me, what I see is I see a lot of guys coming out of the military. Um, and I had this problem. Um, I knew everything about my day, like every single thing you could possibly imagine. I knew what it was going to be like while I was in the military. I knew which uniform I was going to wear. I knew what time I needed to be at work. I knew what I was going to do when I got to work. If I didn't know what I needed to do. There was a book on a shelf somewhere that told me exactly the process to go through to have a known result at the end and figure out whatever I needed to do uh, for my daily work. Um, I knew exactly who to talk to if I ran into a problem. I knew who to talk to if I had a problem with that person. I knew like there was a complete structure to every single thing that I did every single day. Well, when I got out of the military, <laughs> and I applied for a job. What do you wear for a job interview? Like I've been wearing the same clothes for 15 years. What, what do you wear? Um, Wait a second. Wait a second, Patch. Um, this is really a juicy conversation. But I want to go back to your grandfather. Mm -hmm. You told me that your grandfather taught you all this. Mm -hmm. And I want to know how your grandfather taught you what he taught you. What was the structure of your relationship with your grandfather that he became your teacher, for example, rather than your dad? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I guess the biggest thing was um, he was one of the strongest men that I ever met in my life. The reason was not that he was... Um, he was very firm and he was, um, I grew up in the country, so he was firm to most people's guidelines. But the reason why I say he was the strongest man I've ever met is because he was strong enough in his own beliefs and, and ways of doing things that it was, if it wasn't going to kill me, he would let me try something new. And if it worked, he would let us do it like that forever. So let's say we were on the farm and I said, Hey, why don't we bring in the cattle this way? And he'd say, well, I don't see any harm in it. Let's try it. And then I'd probably figure out why we don't do it like that. And I'd learn why we do it the way that he'd always done it. But every once in a while, I was good for one, you know, and he'd say, okay, from, from now on, we can do it your way. Now, if it was going to hurt me, he'd say, well, we don't do it like that because this will happen and this will happen and this will happen and you'll end up getting hurt. 
but he was strong enough in his own way of doing things and his own manhood, if you will, to let me try things and learn um, the reasons that we don't do things. But what he did was he made me an active thinker. He didn't just shut me down and say, this is the way we've always done it. So this is the way we're going to do it. He taught me to think and he taught me to um, have decision-making skills that I used later on in life. I just didn't realize that that's what he was doing at the time. <laughs> so when you think back to that, mm -hmm. I'm trying to determine how much of what you've said is anecdotal and how much is actual. In other words, how much of it are you making up, not making up to speak to me right now? You understand I'm not questioning your sincerity or your integrity, but I am asking you to look at how much of it you've made up afterward to create a story that effectively determines and justifies how you do what you do with the people you're teaching. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. And I, I appreciate the thought uh, behind it. I, it, it took me a long time. So uh, it took me a long time to figure out my life as a whole. Because my life, the way that I saw it, was I was always going to retire from the Marine Corps, and then I was going to go on to have some other career, probably still around the military, or, um, you know, I didn't really think a whole lot past, you know, 30 years in the military, right? But when that changed for me, and I got out of the military, and I had to do something different. Certainly, I, though, long well, before the 30 years. <laughs> yeah, uh, 14 years. Yeah. yeah, got it. So, so something, something changed while you were in the military that said, I'm not going to do this for the next 16 years. It's time to leave. Yeah, well, I didn't have a I didn't really have a choice on that. So I got hurt and I didn't oh. I didn't have a choice on that. But the, the point is, I was forced to out of the situation or the path that I thought I was going to be on. And then I had to make a new plan like tomorrow and I didn't have a clue as to where to start, you know? <laughs> yep, and, and the worst part about it is that isn't that how most people get into trouble in business too, where something happens, like they've been marketing on uh, TV for a long time and then TV ads dry up or they've been marketing on Facebook for a long time and that dries up or they've been number one spot in Amazon for a while and that dries up or something beyond what they consider their control affects the direction of their business and their entire business crumbles. Yeah. Right. So um, even long term investors, um, people that have uh, or families that we know that have mega money. Right. For whatever reason something changes and what used to be a mainstay product or idea or brand all of a sudden evaporates. I mean, things that come to mind uh, right off the bat are like Toys R Us. Who imagined a world that didn't have Toys R Us in it? Or <laughs> go back to like uh, Woolworths, right? Woolworths went away. Yep. I can't imagine the people back in the 70s thought that there was ever going to be a world without Woolworths. Exactly. Right? And yeah. now kids growing up today have no idea what a Woolworths is, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so kids let me today, ask you, I, I completely get what you're saying and I completely agree um, with the thesis that effectively um, shit happens yeah. and now we've got to do something else. Yeah. So yeah. in that learning curve, that was the thing. When I looked back on my life, I, I mean, when I got out, like my life went straight down. Like it was it, mentally, it was hard on me. Physically, it was hard on me. I, I, there was a time in my life where I was very broken mm -hmm. and it wasn't a, it wasn't a physical thing that other people could see. Most people call it like depression or something like that. Um, but I was just lost. I mean, I really didn't know what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And it was at the end of coming out of that, you know, low point in my life, 
I realized how much influence my grandfather had had. And, I, right. and, and that was part of my, you know, inner therapy to myself to get myself back up to a place where now I'm very successful in what I do. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm well known within my uh, networks. And um, a lot of people would look to me and, and either call me a mentor or, I've, you know, I'm definitely a coach for them or, you know, somebody that they can look up to and, and strive to um, work towards those goals. But I'm way far from where I want to be. But looking back on my life, it is my grandfather starting off and then my military career um, and, and the things that those uh, had congruently that taught me how to build uh, things that you talk about, you know, having systems and processes and, and really uh, putting things into a structure that you can do over and over and over again, which is the franchise model, right? You yep. figure out how to do things uh, in a way that you can scale and you can do repetitively. Um, and it all came from the, <laughs> those two major things. I got it. So let me ask about your current business model. Yep. Effectively, you have a thesis um, upon which you built everything you're doing. Yep. And the thesis isn't, um, let's make everything up. Um, the thesis says there's a process, George. <laughs> you're talking to George. George, there's a process for doing what you're about to do. You're about to leave the military. You're about to leave a certain social system. And that social system has worked as well as it has worked here in our country because of several extraordinarily profound ingredients that compose that social system. In short, when you get up every morning, you know exactly what your uniform is going to be. When you get to work that morning, you know exactly what your job is going to be. And if, in fact, it by some reason isn't that job because something happened, you know exactly who to talk to and so forth and so forth. Yep. So you're having that conversation with the guys in the military. And then you're having the conversation with the guys in the military. And now you're going out to stupid world. In short, when I say stupid world, no, you don't say that. I say that. <laughs> but I'm saying you call it something. You're going out on the street. And suddenly all the rules you lived with in the three years or the four years or the seven years or the 15 years that you've devoted to your military life, all those rules are gone. In short, Big Daddy ain't looking out for you. You don't know who to talk to. You don't even know what to talk about because you don't know the rules of the game that you're just about at the beginning of to play. 100%. That's what we do here. We teach you, inspire you, train you, and respond to you in a way that gives you that social reality that you absolutely need to bridge from where you are to where you intend to go. Understanding, even as we say that, you probably don't know where you intend to go. You haven't a clue. So we noticed that, saw that, experienced that myself. When I suddenly hit the bottom of the barrel and saw so many guys, so many ladies just like me, struggling, struggling, struggling like walking around in circles without a clue what to do and nobody to go to, like my granddad, to be able to say, hey, Pop, what would you do in these circumstances or something like that? You follow. Right. Yeah. So in my vernacular, what you sought out was a methodology, a system for bridging the gap. And yeah. that's what you've been speaking about, speaking about, speaking about, talking about, developing, honoring, committing yourself to. So you can become grad dad to all of these folks leaving the military. 
Well, I don't know about granddad, but I, I will definitely be a, a peer for them to uh, lean on. Um, but it, it's really funny because uh, typically civilians will say to military members, welcome to the real world, oh, yeah. as though ours was fake, right? So when we get out into the real world, um, there's things that matter to veterans that <clears throat> it took me a long time to figure this out. And I'm not saying that civilians uh, or people that have never been in the military don't have, uh, you know, certain ethos. And there's a lot of really driven people out there, a lot of great team players that were never in the military. But one of the things that military members all really, truly appreciate is being part of a team, being part of something that's greater than yourself. That's something that we all hold near and dear to us. And uh, I ran into some problems that I never fathomed that I would run into. And it was things like when you work for a civilian company, I didn't know this. I, I had no idea that this was true. When you work for a civilian company and they have no military members there, you have to leave at four o'clock, right? I didn't realize that. And I got in trouble at my first job because I would work until my job was done. <laughs> and apparently, that's what you do when you get in trouble for being on the clock longer than eight to four. Yep. Here's another thing. And I know this sounds crazy now, but it was a big deal for me. I learned of this new thing that I didn't realize existed called HR. Well, <laughs> HR is apparently if you want to get fired, go to HR and tell them <laughs> that they are all jacked up because I couldn't figure out why this guy was telling me that I was working too fast and I needed to slow down because even when I worked faster, I didn't get paid any more money. And I was like, you have lost your mind. You need to stop <laughs> being lazy and actually own this job, you know, do this job like you own the place. <laughs> and then HR calls me to the office and tells me that I'm wrong for telling him that it's not my place. And I'm like, <laughs> this doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. So I told them that they were all messed up. And that's exactly what you say if you want to get fired. Right? <laughs> I know I did it. So in, I, in the I, I, school, got, I got it just a second, just a second, because uh, you're walking from one world into another world. But you're not only walking from one world, the military world, into the civilian world. You're also walking from the world with your granddad out in the country on the farm into the military world, into the civilian world. And the civilian world you're walking into has nothing whatsoever to do with either of the worlds you right. live in. As right. a kid and as a grown man, when somebody tells you don't work that fast, it says to you, this guy must be on drugs or something. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't he want me to work as fast as I cared to, provided it was working? Meaning, yeah. I'm producing the freaking result. They hired me to produce. So effectively, in the military, in the best military, and by that I mean there are people in the military who would also think you're out of your mind for working, in quotes, too fast. But hear me, you didn't learn from them. Right. So effectively, you learned from your granddad something that shaped your military experience in a way that when you came out to this world, you were prepared to learn something that you'd never learned before. Does that... Yeah. Make sense? Yeah, a hundred percent. And and the other thing that I, I learned, and again, I was on some pretty, uh, I was with a lot of really great guys a, in the military, and I didn't realize that our lowest uh, operating guy was still leaps and bounds above uh, what would be considered regular twenty-one year olds, twenty-two year olds, right? Yeah. It, it was. I was around like world-class athletes. You don't think of them that way because, but when you have guys that are running, you know, 
three miles in 16 minutes. <laughs> like those are world-class athletes. I'm not saying that they're going to win the Olympics, but I'm saying even the slowest guy was faster than 90% of the population. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I didn't realize because I was operating at that level. It was, it's hard to understand that that is not normal. So when no, you come I, out I, and you you move that to a, a guy who who he feels bad because I'm the new guy and I'm putting out two or three times more product than he is, he is worried about his own job. But instead of working faster, he wants me to work slower. No, and I, I, I so I don't understand. So so hear me, Patch. Um, from my perspective, you understand. Mm -hmm. um, from my perspective, I can relate to your grandfather with the, what little you've told me about him. I can relate to you entering the military um, in that high speed environment, that get results environment with world class folks uh, who were markedly different than their civilian um, peer. 21 years old in the military is different than 21 years old in the world we're living in. Now, you went back then, you came home, and now you're learning lessons that are shocking to you. Yep. What you could learn in the process of doing that is telling the people you're teaching to come out of the military to slow down. You can teach them in short to live by the rules that you've come face to face with in the civilian community, or you could teach them something significantly other than that. What do you teach them? Yeah, so one of the biggest things that we do very quickly is figure out what it is they want to do. If they want to go work for somebody else, then we'll work heavily on things that deal more with like communication and, you know, language intelligence and really trying to, um, trying to help them understand just the nuances of leadership that are different than the military. So for example, most guys that are getting out of the military, they have some kind of rank, right? Like they've, they've moved up the chain a little bit. Um, and they have to prepare themselves to go back down to the bottom because especially guys, it's really hard for guys that have been in 20, 30 years where they got to a certain point in the military that when they walk into the room, they already have respect of the people standing in the room because the little things on their collars demand some type of respect uh, as soon as they walk in the door. It's programmed. So Exactly. And and they're used to walking in, saying something, and then as soon as they say it, things happen. Because there's so many layers going down that rank structure of other people that are going to ensure that what they said actually gets acted upon. Well, in the civilian world, it's not like that. And I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm not saying that it's right. I'm just saying that it is different. And I mean, I would, I would like it to, um, there's a difference between a pizza hut pizza, a microwave pizza and a oven fired pizza. Now they're all pizza and all of them can be good depending on, you know, different factors, but they can all be good. They're all pizza though. Right. So, uh, a military has a rank structure and typically most civilian jobs have some kind of structure. Maybe they have C-suites, they have, you know, mid-level management, they have, uh, they might have production workers, they might have floor managers. But the point is there's some kind of structure there. The, the difference for a lot of the guys coming out of the military is they don't understand the drastic difference of communication skills that they're going to have to have in order to what some people would refer to as bark a command and then things happen. They can't do that anymore. They have to actually explain what it is they're going to do, how they're going to do it, the reasons they're going to do it, like all this other stuff. 
that for years and years and years, they have never been used to doing. And most of the time they don't have the, they've, they haven't had the requirement to communicate like they are going to have the requirement when they get out. So then and what, I'm, what I'm taking from what you're saying is effectively then um, you have to teach them um, the ledger domain, I'll call it, of communication, of relationship, of structure, of functionality, of leadership, of followership, et cetera, and so forth. So you're going to define this new world and provide them with links to or keys to if this, then that, if that, then the other, and if the other, then ask, and this is how to ask, and this is whom to ask, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Am I presuming too much? Nope, that's exactly right. But one, we take it one step further than that. And what we do is we relate it to things that they did in the military. I'll give you a great short example of that. So if I were to go to a veteran entrepreneur that let's say they have a business, it's working, um, they're, they're doing well, but they don't really have a marketing plan. If I tell them to go make a marketing plan, most of them will look at me like my forehead is untied and they won't have a clue as to what to do. Of course. However, if I say, you know how to make a patrol plan or you know how to prepare a five paragraph order, all of those guys know how to do that. It's been drilled into them for years. They've received a ton of them. They've probably made a ton of them. They understand it thoroughly. But what they are typically doing is they're coming up with things like uh, fast movers, and infantry and mortars and uh, you know all kinds of different military assets. So what I do is I say, look, it's the same thing, but now instead of fast movers, you have Facebook. And instead of infantry, you have Google. And instead of mortars, you have YouTube. And they're like, oh, combined arms exercise. Yeah, oh, got it. So then we, we relate it to things that they already know really, really well and we just make the correlation between what they've already done a bunch to what they're, they have to augment to in order to have a successful business I or got in order that. to work successfully in somebody else's business. I got that. So is that then um, in a system? Yes. So you've developed a system for achieving that objective, that yes. particular objective. And do you have people who are certified to teach that to the military as they are preparing to come out? Yes. Yep. And are those certifications, um, much like the training that has to occur in the military to prepare one of your people to be able to perform at a high level the specific um, responsibilities that have been delegated to them? Yeah. So just like in the military, every military course, this is kind of funny. Every military course has a course on how to train that course. But if you think about it, somebody had to train the person that wrote that course on how to make courses, right? So like yeah. the, it's a, it's a never ending uh, loop of creating content <clears throat> and courses to get to a known factor, whatever that known factor is, Super. right? We want somebody to be able to operate this piece of equipment in order to get a bunch of people to do the same thing, the same exact way. You got to go through this course that leads to this course, leads Perfect. to this course. No, and this is what we do. So, so, let so, me we, say, so, so let me say, Patch, because we're not going to have enough time to mm -hmm. engage in this conversation um, to really provide the people who are watching us to understand it, but I want to do that. I want yep. to have you come back for a second conversation, Great. starting where we left off here. And then I want you to come back a third time because what you're really talking about is going to work on your enterprise in a way that will enable you to build your franchise prototype in a way that will enable you to bring aboard all of the military you're bringing aboard to establish a mindset in each and every one of them 
a, an emotional mindset in each and every one of them to understand nothing's changed but this. And let me describe then what that means for each and every single one of you. Because what I believe, Patch is saying, what I believe is in fact you've been prepared to do something stunningly effective here on the street where 99% of the folks here have never shared the great training you've been privy to. Yeah, welcome to the real world, right? Welcome, <laughs> you got it. And suddenly you're creating a world of your own patch here in this world that's going to bring the confidence, the focus, the excellence of performance to the street that's going to have a transformational impact on America. And I'm deeply moved by it. Because as I hear you speaking about it, I know, absolutely know, that can be done. But it's going to take a military mindset to make it happen. Someone who's been in, someone who's been challenged by, someone who had to overcome the impossible, someone who's actually moved up the ladder in that system which requires a measure of rigor, unlike any rigor any manager here in America has ever been put through. They simply have no idea. So I think it's absolutely brilliant. Well, I, I think I've been blessed with a, a bunch of unique skills that uh, a lot of people aren't um, privy to or I've uh, been forced to, to go get them in one way or the other. And I, I feel like I have a responsibility to, to pull it off. Um, I know the problem. I think I have a pretty good handle on the solution. And I, um, I have the network. So it's like if you, if you know all these things exist and you don't go fix it, then uh, you, got, you got somebody else to answer to. So I'm going to go fix it. Well, I want to help you. Um, I want to help you because I want to expand your reach. I want to expand your capability beyond the capabilities you possess at this moment. And I know simply listening to you that there is much, 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 much more that can be delivered in a conscientious, um, absolutely consistent um, way of integrity that will achieve the result you've set out to achieve. So, Patch, I want to thank you for coming today. I absolutely have loved your, your, your feedback, your response. I don't, nobody else knows on this call that you're, you've come down with the flu. You've overcome it brilliantly here. Um, he usually stands on, um, on clouds when he speaks, uh, folks, but he decided he would sit in a chair. <laughs> just, just to <laughs> accommodate the problem. Patch, thank you. Uh, I'm honored to be here and happy to come back anytime. You got it. We will. Thank you. So, folks, thank you. You understand what we're doing. You understand what we're doing at Radical U. You understand what we're doing at Radical U. You understand why we're doing it, Radical U. You understand that our job at Radical U is to transform the state of economic development worldwide by transforming the state of entrepreneurial development worldwide. And we do that by transforming the state of small business development worldwide by making it possible for every single solitary soul on the planet to truly understand what it means to become a company of one just as you are today, doing it, doing it, whatever you do, to grow it into a company of 1,000 and touching the millions upon millions upon millions of people throughout the world by sharing your story with them, just like Patch Baker just did. Just imagine having the ability to speak to a guy like Patch, have the, have the ability to hear from someone just like you 
have the ability to hear, Michael, I did what you said, and we grew by 10,000. Just imagine the profound power of being able to do that. I'm saying to each and every single one of you, you can do that. And I'm going to say to you, in order to begin that process, go to freebook.michaelegerber.com. Freebook.michaelegerber.com. It's an ebook. I just completed it about six months ago. We haven't published it for real. We've just published it to make it available to each and every one of you. Go get that book. It's called Making It On Your Own in America or Wherever You Happen to Live, A Journey Toward Radical Self-Employment. Get it. Begin to read it. Begin to study it. And then join us at Radical U. You can find Radical U at RadicalU.com. Don't think about it. Don't think about anything. Just freaking do it. I'll see you the next time we come back. And Patch will be joining us as well. Not necessarily the next time, but soon. To go on to talk about what, in fact, Patch is setting out to do. To literally take those great military people he's been exposed to for 14 years and give them an understanding that they don't currently possess that will enable them to transform the state of economic development worldwide with the rest of us. I love you all. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.